Welcome back to Sportsline, everybody. It is the Titans and the Oakland Raiders starting the season off this Sunday at 12 noon over at Nissan Stadium. Here to break it all down with us is our good buddy, the senior editor and writer from TitansOnline.com. He's been covering the Titans forever. Our good buddy, Jimmy Wyatt. Jimmy, how are you tonight? Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me, JB. I hope you're doing well. Doing great, doing great. Well, here it is, opening week in the NFL. The practice games are over. From now on, they count. You know, you and I are obviously a long way away from our playing days, but I still get excited for opening weekend in the NFL. I know it's only one of 16, but I've seen a lot of teams get off to good starts by winning their opener. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you got, uh, you know, certainly the, the build-up, the fans uh, have been looking for this day for, uh, you know, for, for a, an entire year, it seems like. And I know this is what all the work goes into during the preseason. Uh, you know, during the course of the off season, you feel like when, when the mini rookie mini camp starts in May, you feel like his day is never going to get here. <laughs> uh, it, it's a, and it's a, it's a marquee matchup. I mean, the number one crew is here. You got the Raiders who, uh, you know, just, just refer to Peter King. I mean, he does the power rank. He's had the Raiders two, the Titans four. So you, you've got a great matchup here. In Nashville, and it is uh, it is special uh, opening day. Uh, you know, one of these teams going to lose, and and because one of these teams going to lose doesn't mean that their season's over with. But certainly, be a heck of a win uh, to start the year off. And Jimmy, how about the quarterback matchup? Two of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL: Derek Carr for the Raiders, of course, Marcus Mariota for the Titans, and two guys that suffered the same injury on the same day. It's crazy. I mean, I'll never forget that day. Uh, you know. Seeing Marcus Mariota go down in Jacksonville, you know, sort of watching from the seat, I, you couldn't believe he wasn't getting up. And then you see the cart roll out, and uh, and you could just see the disappointment in his face. And then, uh, you know, for him uh, to have to, you know, he, he wasn't watching on the flight back. I know that because he said today he, he found out when he got back in Nashville. But there are a lot of people on that team flight that uh, they've got the direct TV and you can watch the other games uh, uh, you know in your seat and everybody was watching as Derek Carr went down and suffer, as you said JB suffered the same injury and had to be helped off and uh, you know both those guys have been long road back uh, Mariota's injury was was more significant and you know, required longer rehab but both of them have put themselves in a position where they're ready to go. And, uh, you know, you, you got to give it, give both of them props for how hard they work. I mean, these are two of the best young quarterbacks in the league. And, uh, you know, sh sh should, should be a great year for both of them. Jimmy White is our, our guest from TitansOnline.com. All right, speaking of injuries, head coach Mike Malarkey revealing after practice today that a couple of his key players are a little banged up heading into the practice week. Taylor Lewan with an ankle and LaShawn Sims uh, with a groin. Of course, Lewan's the Pro Bowl left tackle. Sims, I guess you could say the projected starter, at least at cornerback, uh, to start the season. Uh, Malarkey didn't seem too concerned that either uh, injury is serious, but both are listed as day-to-day. -day. Um, how serious do you think these injuries are, and is either guy in danger of not being able to play on Sunday? Well, I think you know, those, those are things that you kind of see throughout the practice week. Uh, you know, if a guy can't do anything throughout the week, which is Sims. I mean, Sims never started practice today. I know Mike Malarkey has said, you know, many times if a guy doesn't put himself in a position to practice on Friday, it's going to be tough for him to play on Sunday. Well, Lawan, you know, uh, started but uh, but then suffered the you know sprained ankle during, uh, according to to Malarkey. So uh, you know, just have to wait and see how he responds mm -hmm. to that. I mean, you know, the, you, you definitely need him in there and want him in there. I mean, he's your pro bowl. Pro Bowl tackle. You know, the, they do have Dennis Kelly who stepped in for him. I'm sure you remember against the Packers last year and played well. So, uh, but but it would be a big challenge, and uh, you just kind of have to keep your fingers crossed and hope uh, hope that things will work out. If Sims can't go, Jimmy, on Sunday, who's going to who would start at corner opposite uh, Logan Ryan? Well, they've worked. You know, throughout the preseason, they've worked a lot of guys. Uh, in and I think that you know that kind of helps you in a situation like this because everybody's gotten work. I mean, I know uh, Price of Canes worked a lot in, in in different packages. Dory Jackson's worked a lot in different packages. 
uh, you know, obviously Sims, you know, was the off-season performer of the year, and uh, uh, and, that, and that's an award given out by Malarkey, and he he started the first two preseason games, but Dory started the last two, and uh, uh, I think that's one where they'll just kind of see how the week plays out, see who is available, and then uh, you know, because it's not who's ju- it's not just who starts, it's it's. It's who's your nickel too. And I was going to say, yeah, it, aff- it affects the sub packages too, right? Yeah, so everything is is involved there. If, if you're pulling one guy, the equation. So uh, I think they'll start to zero in on what their real realistic options are as the week goes on, and uh, and then uh, and then make a decision. Jimmy Wyatt is our guest. All right, Jimmy. A lot of people are maybe not panicking, but maybe a little concerned as to what they saw from the Titans uh, in the offseason. You and I both know we've been covering the NFL forever. Uh, You can't get hooked by what you see uh, in the preseason, good or bad. Still, the offensive line wasn't as dominant as we thought they would be. And I go back to that third preseason game, the the so-called dress rehearsal game against the Bears at Nissan Stadium. Now, whether they win or lose a preseason game really is irrelevant, but you know, the, the amount of penalties that they, they had. They had a punt blocked in that game. Spain getting ejected. And it just didn't look like they were ready to play football that day. Based on what you saw in the preseason, how do you think that projects into what we could see in the regular season? Well, I, I always say, I'm like you, JP. I, mean, I, don't, I don't put too much stock into results. And you want to see, you know, you want to see positive developments happen, obviously. And you want to, you want to go into the regular season with a little momentum, but you know, they didn't look great in a couple of games, no question. I mean, the Bears game was ugly. You know, the Jets game was ugly. Uh, I think Carolina you know, is a game that the, a team would point to and say, this is this is who we are. Uh, you know, I look at Oakland. Oakland finished 0-4 in the preseason. Right. You know, the, the New England Patriots you know, the, the overwhelming favorite to, to, to go to the Super Bowl again this year and win it. Uh, they finished 1-3. and and Cleveland I, Browns 4-0. Cleveland uh, Browns four and zero in the preseason, Jimmy. What, what's that? Cleveland Browns four and zero in the preseason. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's the perfect example of that. And I and I remember the year when the when uh, I can't remember the exact year, but I certainly remember when Detroit finished four and zero in the preseason, and then they finished over the season zero and sixteen. Right. Uh, Two thousand eight. Yeah. So, so I mean, I, I think you know certainly. Things change when the regular season starts. I mean, whether you admit it or not, I mean, and, it's, and, and players and coaches don't like to, to to dismiss the preseason because, I mean, because uh, you know the, the games are playing. You're still evaluating players. You know, fans are paying for the tickets. So, uh, but but there's no question that when the real games start, the intensity level goes up. It means more to players. Players are playing for longer periods of time. Guys are playing together and not get, and you're not having, you know, guys mixed in with the starters. So uh, it, it's just a different feel for everybody when week one starts. If they play poorly on Sunday, uh, you know, it's, I, I don't think it's going to be because they were, you know, were lack of days during the preseason, and uh, because there's going to be a lot of teams that play poorly in the in the in the preseason, that come out and play well in the regular season. So I, I just think you have to judge this team based on maybe what it did last year with all these key players in place, and you have to keep your fingers crossed that, that some of the new additions can hit the ground running and help you. And that, that includes Corey Davis, that includes Eric Decker, that includes Adore Jackson, as you mentioned earlier, Logan Ryan, Jonathan Cyprian. So Vester Williams. I mean, this team does have a lot of new faces that are going to have to step in and uh, and and play well. Spending a couple more minutes with our buddy Jimmy White from TitansOnline.com. Titans and Raiders this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Noon kickoff. You can watch it on News Channel 5 uh, over, over on News Channel 5 in beautiful high definition. All right, Jimmy, let's talk about the Raiders. I mean, we know their credentials and, you know, they already had a pretty good uh, offense with Carr and Cooper. They add Jared Cook, our old buddy, former Titan, and they bring back Beast Mode uh, at running back. Uh, this is going to be a challenge for the Titans' defense at offense. I mean, it's one of the best offenses in the league. Is having to face the face Titans 
having to face them right out of the gate. I mean, uh, I really like Derek Carr. I've always liked Derek Carr. I think he's a really, uh, you know, you know, highly skilled quarterback who's, who can make plays on the move. He's got some weapons to throw to. I think Amari Cooper, I talked to my buddy Vic DeFour, who covers the Raiders, and uh, and kind of got a long scouting report on them yesterday. I mean, it's just it's beast mode. Uh, looks like he's in great shape. And he said he had talked to some people in Seattle that, that have observed Marshawn from afar and say he looks like he's in the best shape he's been in a long time. Amari Cooper, I think, has gotten bigger, you know, has bulked up a little bit. Uh, you know, I think he's gotten tougher. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, Jerry Cook is going to add an extra dimension to that offense that they haven't had that can stretch the field down the middle. I think Crabtree is certainly, uh, you know, it, it gets overlooked sometimes because they got so many other guys around them. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a, uh, of a groove. And that's not even counting Cordell Patterson who, who, uh, you know, is, is dangerous in the returning game and and uh, he can do some things himself. It's a good offense and a good offensive line and uh, you know their defense is the question mark. You know they, they struggled last year. You know uh, I, I think people feel like if they can just get into the you know the the teens or get into you know the lower twenties as far as defense goes rankings, they could be set because that offense is going to carry them. But uh, well, you hope the Titans are, are you know can can match them and slow them down and uh, and turn it into a a, a a a game that I think a lot of people think it's going to be over there on Sunday. Should be exciting, Jimmy. We as always, we thank you for the time and uh, yeah, it's here, man. It's time to get it going for real, and we appreciate your time so much. And have a wonderful evening, my friend. Okay, have a good one. Thanks, JB. All right, that's the great Jimmy Wyatt from TitansOnline.com. You can follow him on Twitter at Sports. You can read him, of course, at TitansOnline.com. All right, we come back. We're going to switch gears and talk a little college football. The coach, Doug Matthews, is going to join us, and we're going to break down everything we saw in week one of the college football season. Vanderbilt, the Vols, and what's going on at Texas A&M. We'll get to it all next, plus your phone calls. Stay with us. Sportsline continues on News Channel 5+. Plus.